Right, so welcome. Get my screen set up here. So welcome to the live active citizen lesson. We are so happy that you are joining us today. Again, if you have not already logged into Minecraft Education Edition, please go ahead and log in just so we can make sure that you're you don't have any issues with logging in. And then also make sure that you have a piece of paper in front of you and something to write with. Just as a reminder, the session is being recorded and it is going to be shared publicly. So that also means that it's going to be available on demand so that you can go back and watch it at any time and you can share it with other students or teachers or with your colleagues. As soon as the video is published, I will be sending a link to all of your teachers so that they have access to this recording. Just a little housekeeping. We it would be best if you kept your mics on mute, but there will be times where we're going to ask you to come off of mute and and share and ask questions. We also want to encourage you to use the chat to share aha moments that your students might be having and also to please ask questions at any time. We are here to support you through this journey. As we begin our introductions, we would love to know where all of you are joining us from. So if you will type in the chat your city and state, if you want to add your school over there, we would love to know where you are here from. My name is Mrs. Dooley. I am a 20 plus year educator in the great state of Texas and absolutely love using Minecraft Education Edition in all grade levels and all curriculum areas. And also here with us today is Mr. Maurer. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Aaron Maurer here. I am in Bettendorf, Iowa, and I support 21 school districts in computer science and STEM and authentic learning experiences. So I spent 14 years teaching middle school and now get to uh, explore many other school districts, which is great. Perfect. So we are going to jump into why we're here for the Active Citizen Lesson, and that's to learn all about the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Peace Prize is known throughout the world as the prize that recognizes those humans who make the biggest difference. The people who are awarded the prize are incredible people who have achieved their goals without any superpowers. Instead, they use human capabilities like communication, diligence, empathy, and collaboration to dramatically change the world. The Nobel Peace Prize has the power to change people's thoughts and actions to make the world a better place and more peaceful place for everyone. So our learning objectives today, in this lesson, we are going to have the opportunity to walk in the shoes of a Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Our objectives include knowing the purpose and the value of the Nobel Peace Prize while discovering a skill used by a Nobel laureate to achieve their cause democratically and peacefully. And then the second objective is to set out your vision, no matter how big or small, for peaceful progress in your community. And we're going to be using Minecraft Education Edition to build a visualization of your vision. So a Nobel Prize laureate is a person who is honored with the Nobel Peace Prize for outstanding creative or intellectual achievements. So before we get started, we would like to know how many laureates you can name. So if you'll put that over in the chat or if you have your camera on, you can hold up your fingers and hands and tell us how many laureates can you name? And it is OK if you can't name any at the moment. That is perfectly OK, because after this lesson, you will be able to name one for sure and then more after that. OK, got some numbers over there. Three, that's great. So as we are sharing our numbers, we're also going to be setting up for our learning today. So on a piece of paper in front of you, it can be a scratch piece of paper, it can be a regular piece of paper, but on a piece of paper, you're going to sketch out this table and that way you can write down some interesting facts along the way on our journey through this active citizen world. And so you're going to start your table off with the top saying who 
because in just a moment we are going to fill in the name of today's laureate that we are going to be learning about. And then what skills or tools did they use to make a difference? And then interesting facts about them or interesting things. So as we are learning about this laureate, you can have a place to write down what you find most interesting about the person. And then you're going to notice that there is a a bottom row there that says your name. We've also added a place for you to start thinking about how you can use your skills, your strengths, and your superpowers to make a more peaceful world. So what are you going to use your voice for? So that first row, this row up here, this is going to be for that laureate that we are soon to be introduced to. And then the second row is going to be for you to start jotting some things about you, special skills that you have and interesting things. So we're going to give you just a moment to be able to sketch out that table so that you can be taking some notes on this journey. And for those of you who have just joined in, if you have any issues getting logged into Minecraft Education Edition, please put that over there in the chat and we will be more than happy to help you to make sure that you can get logged in. I also just threw that table over there in the chat in case you still need to see it. But again, the top is who. This, the next column is the skills or tools they use to make a difference. And then that third column is going to be interesting facts that you're learning about your laureate. And then remember, the last row is about you to be thinking about your skills. Okay, so at this point we're going to jump in because we are excited to introduce the laureate that we will be following today. So Mungari Matai was a university professor and an environmental activist who founded the Greenbelt Movement to help reforest and empower women in Kenya. Wangari received the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004 for her contribution to reforestation and democracy in Kenya. So we're going to watch about a three minute video to learn more about Wangari before we jump into Minecraft, just because once we get into Minecraft, we're actually going to be walking in her shoes and experiencing her story. But as we're watching the video, be sure to start adding notes in your table that you just created, again, including those skills or tools that she used to make a difference and any interesting facts that you are discovering about her. Vangari Matai was the first woman from Africa to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. She was also the first woman to become a professor in her home country of Kenya. As for her peace work, it all started by planting one tree. When visiting some of Kenya's poorest areas, Vangari Matai saw firsthand how the degradation of the environment impacted the lives of rural women. Kenya's forests were being cleared and replaced by commercial plantations, resulting in more drought, loss of biodiversity, and increased poverty. In 1977, she founded the Green Belt Movement, an organization focused on reforestation and women's rights. It began with women working together to grow seedlings and plant trees to bind the soil, store rainwater, provide food and firewood. For each tree planted, they also earned a small sum. Some people laughed at the idea of enlisting villagers, but Vangari Matai didn't listen, and by 2004, the women of the Green Belt Movement had planted 30 million trees. The members learned that they were not powerless, that they could find their way out of poverty. If they could bring about such positive change to their communities, what else could they accomplish? When the Kenyan authorities started selling off portions of the forest to private construction projects, Vangari Matai sprang into action and opposed the government despite police brutality. Her activism brought to light the corruption and lack of transparency of government. Thousands of citizens mobilized to defend their forests and their rights. Eventually, Vangari Matai and her organization gained so much support, the government had to stop the project. 
Thereby, the Green Belt movement evolved and started participating in the reshaping of Kenya into a more democratic country. In 2004, Vangiri Matai was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for her work. Although this prize comes to me, it acknowledges the work of countless individuals and groups across the world. They work quietly and often without recognition to protect the environment, promote democracy, defend human rights, and ensure equality between women and men. By so doing, they plant seeds of peace. Vangari Matai passed away in 2011, but her legacy still lives on. Through the Greenbelt movement and initiatives like the Trillion Trees campaign, we're still making progress on reclaiming and restoring forests. Nowadays, we're constantly being bombarded with problems and it is easy to feel overwhelmed. Vangari Matai's method is simple. Start little and do the best you can. Think about the big picture, knowing that each change you make to one part will affect the whole. One person's simple idea, a community coming together to plant trees, can make a huge difference. Hopefully at this point you were able to jot down a few things on your table, but in just a moment we're going to jump into Minecraft Education Edition and we're actually going to get to walk in her shoes. Before we do, one of the power, many, many powers of Minecraft Education Edition is that we can travel you know, virtually anywhere in there. So I want to point out two places that we will be visiting today. We're going to start at the Nobel Peace Center, which is in Oslo, Norway, and then we're going to head to Kenya, which is the home of, and where Wangari's story began. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Maurer, and we're going to go into Minecraft Education Edition. He's going to help guide us on how to get logged in if you're not logged in yet, and then get started. All right, well, let's do this. Let's get this uh, interactive part going. So we're going to load up uh, Minecraft Education. I'm going to share my screen here in just a second. But in the meantime, if anyone's having issues getting this to the main screen of Minecraft, please let us know. We don't want to intentionally leave you behind. So just throw a message in the chat so we can get you brought up to speed. But I'm going to go ahead here and get uh, my Minecraft uh, screen going. And so we should be on this main page here. And then Noreen, just let me know if things pop up in the chat um, as we get going in this. And so if we're on this screen, you've probably been here many times if you've played Minecraft, but then, you know, one of the, the latest updates, we have this new and featured uh, option right here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the new and featured. And this is where you're gonna see all the new things coming into the library for Minecraft education, which is really exciting. You can see our active citizen one is here, but there's been three new ones that have emerged uh, since then as well. So this allows you to stay up to date with all the stuff. It's it's hard to do. It's hard to do as students. It's hard to do as educators. There's just not enough time in the day. So it's a great little feature. But for today, we're going to focus on the active citizen, the Nobel Peace Center world. So we're going to go ahead and click that world there. And again, we can see we've got some options here. And what we want to do is we want to create the world so we can dive in and get to exploring. And so hopefully this will load much faster than my last time, which I think it was loading uh, on a telephone line. It felt like oh, we're, already, we're already way ahead here, Noreen, from the last session. That's great. So before we get walking and moving around and exploring, you can use your... I'm using a, a touchpad for the mouse or your mouse. And as you kind of move around it, kind of think about that adjusting your, your neck on your head if you haven't used Minecraft before, kind of like your head on a swivel. And we are looking at the Nobel Peace Center that's in Norway. We'll also see off to the left-hand side, the just the basic commands that you'll need for this. So if you are new to Minecraft, you don't have to know all the things. It's meant to be, an immersive experience. So there's not a, 
a lot within the experience that you're going to have to be able to know how to do uh, in terms of like advanced Minecraft. Sometimes that 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 frightens people. Eventually, you'll have freedom to go hog wild in your build that we're going to do a build later on in this lesson. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to use W to walk forward. And we're going to go ahead and talk to this gentleman that's been staring at us this whole time here. And we can see that that's Alfred Noble. He is the name or the person that the Nobel Peace Prize was named after. And I don't know in the chat, uh, but if anyone has an idea of what he's known for, go ahead and throw that in there. I'll make sure I let you know before we, we dive into uh, Wangari's world here. But we're going to go ahead and right click on this gentleman. And he's going to give us an introduction of where we are, that we're in the Peace Center. We've talked about it. And what we're going to find out, as you can read right here, is that he invented dynamite, which was meant to be a positive contribution. And in many ways, it was. But we also know that that can sometimes lead to some negative consequences as well, if not used properly. And so he went through and used as well to create the prize. So he just gave us a little bit of information about who he is. If at any point in time, reading is 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 difficult or language barrier, things of that nature. The nice thing about Minecraft education, in a lot of these icons, we have this immersive reader icon. And I won't go through everything with this, but if you were to click on the immersive reader, it's a really excellent feature that's in many Microsoft product. It will read it to you. You can go through and change the preferences to make it easier to read if you would like to do that with font size, things of that nature. If you're working with students, you can highlight the nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So there's a lot of really beneficial features within Immersive Reader if you haven't used it. Or if you need it read to you, you can hit play, and it would read the text to you as well. So just keep that in mind if that's something that you need, or later down the road if it's something that could be helpful for others. We're going to go ahead and hit OK, and he's going to give us two options here, what we want to do. Do we want to visit the center, or do we want to participate in a build challenge? We're going to come back to the build challenge, but for now, we want to get into uh, the world of, of, of Wangari. So let's go ahead and click Visit. And when we do that, he's going to go ahead and let us get out of here. And we start to look around. You can explore. You can see there's some things roped off. I think there's a lot more to come. Here is a museum exhibit of his dynamite, which if you do click these blocks, it'll tell you, you know, not to dynamite. But if you want to keep doing it, see what happens, by all means, be our guest. And in this gallery, this part of the, the exhibit in the Nobel Peace Center is we can see we've got four different options over here. Um, here is Malala, um, very famous person. If you don't know her, definitely worth checking out. We got Dalai Lama right here. And over in the back left is our person for today. And you could go through and check some things out. But what we want to do for the sake of time for this life lesson, we're going to go right here and we're going to press this brown button. And she's going to emerge from her scene. So let's go ahead and talk to her. And we're going to get to learn about her and the adventure that we're about to embark on. So let's us know that her home country of Kenya, over time, the plantations depleted the soil and damaged the ecosystem. And so she worked, as we saw in the video, to restart the land or restore the land, excuse me. So let's go ahead and click Start Adventure. And this is going to load up her world. We're in Kenya. and the same kind of controls as we've been using. We're just going to go ahead and walk forward and let's go down and talk to her really quick. And then I'm going to set you free after we do this first activity to explore this and experience the adventure. So if we go up and, and speak to her, you're, what's going to happen is you're going to see that as we read through and explore some of these things, you're going to be presented with different challenges as you go here. And that way you're going to be able to work at your own pace. And this very beginning one is just to help us plant a tree and make sure we kind of understand some basic controls really is what this is. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. She told us to look at this chest here to her right. 
So if I, I right click and open that, you can see that I've got sapling right here in the chest. And if you've never done this, if I just do a regular mouse click, I want to drag it down to one of these bottom squares for the sake of this adventure. And then if I get out of that chest box, you can see that now at the bottom in my inventory, I have those sapling seeds right there. Now, each of these blocks, if you look at my screen, if you haven't familiar with this, is coordinated with a number. So the sapling is coordinated with box one. So if I press one on my keyboard, it highlights that. If I were to have something in, in box number three, I could press three and it would equip me with that material. At this point, I only have one, which is a sapling. So we're gonna go ahead and equip that and we need to plant this tree. So let's go here to this little spot here that, that's moving and we're gonna go ahead and place it. And you can see in your bottom right hand corner, if you're not sure it's the, the right click. And when you do that, the world starts to grow. That's a lot of fast uh, tree development there with just one little plant, but that's the way to go. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay, and we're gonna follow her. So this is gonna open up the next part of this adventure. So the thing is with all these adventures, not just hers, but any of the other three, you kind of go like a step-by-step. -step. You can't progress on and see the other parts of the world until you complete the next task at hand. So this is where I'm gonna give you some time to explore. If there's questions, I'll help out. And then in, in a few minutes, I'll start to play my way through this in case you're stuck and we can kind of help you out here along the way. You may not get through all of it during our time together because we wanna make sure we spend time building as well, but at least this will give you a sense of more of her world and the challenges that come with these types of adventures. So in this case, you'll be asked to plant some saplings to restore the forest and restore the river. So I'm going to leave you here. I will give you a general direction of where to start. You see here you have five trees to plant, and there's five little spaces right there. So this next challenge isn't too difficult, but I'm going to let you explore this journey and see what comes of it. We'll be here to answer questions while we get going but really less time of us speaking at you gets you more interactive if you haven't already jumped ahead and started working. Noreen, is there anything else that I forgot about that I need to include? Because I know I get excited and sometimes well, my brain. So, so we have some students who have lost their saplings. So can you demonstrate how to go back and get the saplings from the chest again? Oh, yes. They, they have moved it to their inventory and it has disappeared. They moved it. It was in their inventory. They moved it to their inventory and then it disappeared. Hmm. OK. So. Can we pull up? Uh, Doesn't let you get it from there. I've tried that. You have to get it from the okay. chest. <laughs> OK, got to go back to it again. This is where we started. It just disappeared. So one of the things that I have found, I ran into a glitch one of the times I've ran into this world. Um, and it happened in another one too. If you um, escape, hit the escape button and save and exit and come back into your world, I've had that where in the third or fourth mission, I lost my object and it came back into my inventory. So let's try that. So I'll hit the save and exit just in case you haven't done this before. It's gonna save where you are at. And then what we wanna do is we will pull that same world back up. Or if you'd like to start all over, you could do that. But if we go here to play and then we choose view my worlds, here's my latest adventure that I was just working on. You can see the screenshot of where I was standing. So go ahead and hit play on that and see if your saplings return. Uh, that worked for me for a material and one of the later challenges in this world.
Please let us know if that didn't work and you still don't see them. Still didn't work. Okay. okay. Mm hmm. Well, maybe for the time being, let's exit out of here and just load up a new world and see if you bring that back. It might be just so you have some time to explore here. I don't remember the re Okay, that no, still didn't work. Doesn't show in the chest or the inventory. Hmm. I have not had that happen with the sapling. I had it in a later part. I actually have had it. it's a similar thing with the the sapling and and this is probably just good practice if you ever have any issues with the worlds too. I had to go and clear out my active citizen worlds. So I just went and deleted those worlds. And Mr. Maurer can show you how to do that. But this is good because sometimes closing and, and reopening doesn't always work either. But if you go in and you clear out the current worlds that you have, that should clear out that that memory or that that cache that's happening and should rebuild it too. Oh, but it looks like he's trying some code also. Not enabled, darn it. Hmm, that is weird. That doesn't really do you much good if we can't have saplings. Mr. Maurer, do you mind showing them how they can go in and just delete their current active citizen templates? That might help. Yep. Are you referring by going here and clearing these out? Yeah, I cleared out my current ones. All right. So let's do this. In your world, in your, let me go back. I went a little fast, sorry. Under view my worlds, if you're back at that main menu, if you see your active citizen world, if you click on that, instead of hitting play, if you go here to settings and you scroll down to the bottom of your game settings, there's an option to do some things. In this case, we don't have a whole lot in this world. Obviously, you, have, you don't even have the saplings. So let's hit delete world. And it'll clear that out. And you want to make sure that all your active citizens worlds, at this point, you probably just have the one, um, is cleared out there. And then let's try loading up that world again. And I apologize that you're having this glitch. It doesn't make it off to a good start, but welcome to the real world. Things like this happen all the time, and uh, it's just a minor setback compared to some of the setbacks that these Nobel laureates have had to face in their world trying to work to make the world a better place. So we go back here to create a world. And for those that are not having issues, if you throw in the chat kind of where you are so far, that would be cool to see too. All right, so let's go in. Just go back to this world here. Let's enter again. Got a little excited there. All right, now let's go back and see if this chest will work for you. So I've looks, got a sap sapling. Did it work for them? 
It looks like it, it's, it's starting to work and some have made it to where they are herding goats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but <laughs> so you should be able to jump with the space bar. Is that can you jump in this world, Mr. Maurer? You can. Yeah. I will tell you that for some of those that are high up, you need to find the pathway within that. I'm going to call it a mountain. I know it's not a mountain, but like that ridge that they're on and find the the tunnel cave step that will get you up to the top. But yes, you can jump space bar. If you can't do the, the flying, we would do like, you know, free world build, but you can jump. So there is a, a few of those goats that can be kind of a bit challenging. And if you're trying to jump on an iPad, you should be able to click twice on your control. I just tried it on mine. Oh, you got it. Okay, perfect. So is everybody up and <laughs> grooving now? We have some high goats. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they're jumping. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can get to that point. I can. I can feel your productive struggle along with you. So let me go ahead and cross this river here. And we'll probably go just for the sake of this exploration, another five, seven minutes. I want to get us into the build activity as well, because that's also really important. So uh, I'm not saying that to stress you out or to pressure you, because you can always come back and check out some of these things here as well. But we want to make sure you get a chance to see all the options that come with this Nobel Laureate Active Citizen World. So we got to find the goats. So we will enter the goat arena. All right, so this is where I would use number two on my keyboard to use the, the shepherd's crook. And I can see here, if I look around, we've got some goats on the loose. And I'm assuming you guys are probably referring to this wonderful animal right here. It is king goat as he sits high up on the perch. I was just trying something different. I thought maybe it would give us a magical tree or something. All right, let me get my bearing straight here. So if you haven't found it, there is a little tunnel right underneath um, Hungary that will take you up to this kind of little cliff. It's not going to get you to that guy yet, but you can definitely grab these other guys. Um, oh, don't fall. Is there anybody that's gotten all five goats yet? They're still working on this bad boy. Billy Goat Gruff here. All 
How are you all doing out there? How many <laughs> goats have you found so far? We have two. That's good. I'll give it one that has found all five. All right. Mr. Mauer is struggling here with. (laughs) No, I was going to go back out and show where to look. So if I don't know if this perspective helps where some of you are at, but here's the goat that's up high. And there's a little ridge off. It'd be off to the goat's left that will take you to a house and a cave that will allow you to get over there. Oh, I just jumped terrible right there. Let's go a couple more minutes and then we'll get into the other thing. So, oh man, come on. As you are walking through the world, this world was actually built to replicate the landscape in Kenya. So, when we think about what it was like for Wangari when she was going through and planting and what her environment looked like, this is a replication of that. So, you actually are getting to see through her eyes the type of landscape and surroundings that she had. Oh my gosh, I have like jump fright here. Oh, my deal is. Can't make the jump. Pressure is mounting. Not really. But. Also, be going back to that table that you created and what are some skills that she had to have to be able to to do this planting and to be able to navigate through here. What are some interesting things that you're thinking right now as you're walking through this world in her shoes? And then also be thinking about your skills. Obviously, hers is a lot with outdoors and planting and nature. What are some skills and interesting facts about yourself as we start to think about how you can create a world filled with peace. So oh, let's do the. Oh, go we, ahead. We have a goat in um, back <laughs> back in the building. <laughs> Goats just like to do whatever they want to do. In Minecraft and the real world. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I want to segue over to our build challenge because I want to make sure you have some time. Uh, to build with the challenge that's given within uh, this world and in the active citizen lesson. And I know you might not be done either the goats or the water system that lies ahead, but for the sake of time and not spending forever uh, trying to get back out, let's go ahead and if everybody could hit the escape, if you're on a uh, device, let's go ahead and just save and exit and get out of this world here together collectively. And while you're doing that, I'm actually going to pull up a slide here real quick, and we'll see it in the world as well. Uh, But I know that's not what I want. What we want to do here is we're going to be doing a build challenge after this adventure world. And we'll go, I'll show you here in just a second. But the, the build challenge for you is to think about your vision, your idea for a more peaceful world. And so you're going to have a lot of autonomy 
in terms of your own ideas and how you want to bring these ideas to life within Minecraft. But it's focused around this, this concept of a peaceful world and how do we do it the right way. And so I want you to kind of be thinking about that just a little bit as we dive into this to kind of plant that seed because that's what we're going to ask you to begin this build and with the time that we have you probably will not get it all the way done either and that's okay so i'm going to head back to active citizen I'm just going to create a new world here and when we met our gentleman mr noble at the very beginning he had asked us if we wanted to visit or head to the build challenge. So if we go back to him, let's go ahead and click on the build challenge this time. And it's going to bring us to this big world. Now, this is where we have complete freedom to a certain degree. We have this huge landscape of a building canvas. And if you don't know, if you're like, how did he just get up there? If you haven't played Minecraft before, if you double tap space bar, you can fly up. And this will help you kind of get a better perspective of your build when you get going, kind of see what you have and where you need to fill in. But as we talk with him, he is going to tell us the challenge again to build a representation of your cause. Like what's, what is it that you're after that could help us build a more peaceful world? And so we saw in this case, the planting of trees. Uh, there are other Nobel laureates about ex expression and access to education, um, rescuing displaced people. What is it that you are passionate about, whether that's a, a cause or maybe it could be more of a concept for a peaceful world and building that vision out here in Minecraft. So let's take a second just to think about some of those ideas. And if you'd be willing to be brave enough, throw some of your ideas in the chat. So it might be just the idea that triggers a new thought for someone else. And then we'll get into uh, the building and just give you a, a couple little things to keep in mind and give you some time to actually build that out. So what are some thoughts that you guys are thinking as a cause or a concept for a more peaceful world? You are also welcome to come off of mute if you would like to share that way yep. too. So maybe we just need some time to uh, think a little bit more. Maybe some of you know what you want to build. Um, you're just not ready to share. Maybe you just can't share with the situation of your, your setup. So I would still love, Noreen, I would love to hear what your ideas are. But for those that are ready to start building, again, if you're new, if you already know how to build, you can obviously, you're probably already diving in and doing that. So by all means, have at it. But those that are new, if you press the E on your keyboard, what's different than earlier when we were in the adventure mode, we have access to every single Minecraft block. So we can build with anything that we want within here. And if you're not sure what all to use, you can kind of just search. Like maybe I know I want something red. Here are the different types of red blocks. Or, you know, if I need, I want, a wood type of structure for whatever it might be, you can still, or you can just scroll. And just like we did with the sapling, let's say I wanted to use these birchwood planks, I would just drag and put it down here. And maybe I like these stairs and, you know, whatever it is, that, depending on what, what my vision for my cause is going to be for a peaceful world, I can start to add these in. I can always, when inventory two, get rid of anything. So let's say I'm done with that one, but now I want these chiseled stone bricks, you can keep adding and swapping. Like they don't permanently delete by any means. And then you can go ahead and keep using that to, to build your world as you get going. Um, and one of the things that I find is as I start to build, especially with something big, to get up in this fly position and kind of just look around, just take a look at what I've got, what I don't have, and uh, give you some time here to work 
on that, if there's questions about building or anything like that, feel free to throw them in the chat. But I want to give you some time, Noreen, I want to give you some time to do a little bit of building here on your vision for a peaceful world or your cause that you're passionate about. Noreen, were there any questions or anything that popped up during that time? Or they? Yeah, well, we have great ideas on nutrition okay. and health and planting mm. crops for food. Oh, nice. So we're going to give you a little bit of time here to build. It won't be all the time but we do have some things we want to show you here at the end before we wrap up so let's go about uh eight to ten minutes here and then we will show you what to do next and how to share your build with the world because we'd love to see what you've got Mauro, do you also could you also demonstrate some signs and posters that they might be able oh, to use for anybody yes. that's new to Minecraft that that can yes. enable? Okay. Yes, thank you so much for reminding me. So, if you want something to label your build to make it clear of what it is, you can do a couple things. There is something in here um, called a poster. They're different sizes, and so I'll put them in here. We've got poster. We have a sign of different types. I'll pick the crimson one and, and board. And so I'll put these words back up here in just a second in case you want these. But as I'm doing uh, my build, maybe I want to put a label on it. So this is board size, just so you are aware of it. It's large, think about like pretty massive chalkboard. If I don't want something that big, I could do the poster. You can add whatever you want to be on, on these posters. I'm just going to label it that way. And if you would want something perhaps a little smaller, we have the sign. So these are just nice to have the label, add text, maybe some explanation to what you're building. So you can see those there, the board, poster, and sign. And again, I just searched in inventory for those words, and they pop up just like so. So another cool feature too, oh, let me get this done here. As you're going and you want to document your process or you could add more writing to it, I got to finish this. But in your inventory, you also have what's called a camera. And the camera will allow you to take pictures of your build and your progress that you can do too. So I've got a camera here. 
And if I go, it'll give me like a little Polaroid shot, and I could take it, you know, from different angles. The other thing that's kind of cool, you can set your camera up and put yourself in the picture. So it kind of does like a countdown timer. There's a picture there of me as well. No, it's not called book. I mean, I'm having a brain moment here. What's it uh, to see my pictures? It's not portfolio. Thank you. Goodness. Save me there. And in the portfolio, then you could open this up and you could then see your pictures. And this is what's pretty cool. You could be like, this is me during my initial build. You can kind of bring your your build or story to life, which is which is pretty awesome. And then keep working through that. All the pictures you take will show up, and you can delete, reorganize things of that nature. So we are coming in under just a few more minutes left, and I know you're in your build, but I want to pass the mic uh, back to Noreen because we want to talk a little bit about how to share your work, some next steps, and how to kind of stay in touch because we'd love to see what you're coming up with. And we saw some absolutely wonderful ideas the last time we were fortunate enough to do this. And so I want to go ahead and maneuver out of here. And then Noreen, I'm going to let you jump back to taking over. And let me go ahead and stop sharing here. There we go. So hopefully you are well into your build challenge and you're building something that is representing anything in the world that can make it more peaceful. So if we think about Wangari and what she did to change her environment in Kenya and the Green Belt movement, she used those skills and applied them in a good way. She didn't have any superpowers. She just used her skills and thoughts and creativeness. So on the table that we had you all sketch out on your paper, hopefully you put some ideas on about you and your skills and things that are interesting about you. And then we hope that you are be beginning to build something in Minecraft Education Edition that represents what could make the world more peaceful. It could be something as simple as creating a bench for people to sit and other people to go sit with somebody for company or to make friends or we had some great ideas over there in the chat it could be something that is nutrition and health based or planting crops for food it could be creating a one of those free book libraries that they put in neighborhoods where you, know, you can go and exchange books so all of those ideas anything that you were coming up with we would like to see and also we want to go over the objectives of today's lesson. So first of all, it was to learn more about the Nobel Peace Prize. And there are many laureates. Mr. Maurer, how many laureates are there? Uh, quite a few. I posted earlier, let me go see, I scroll back up. So there have been a total of 892 individuals. Some of those have won the award more than once. Um, and maybe a powerful conversation there is, you know, of those 892, 844 were men and 48 have been women and 24 have been organizations. So there's probably a lot of conversation around those numbers in and of itself as we also look to make sure our world is equitable and, and peaceful for all. Okay, that's amazing. We were able to learn about one special laureate today, but obviously, as we know that there are many more, but you all also have that superpower to go and change the world. So our goals for today were to learn more about the Nobel Peace Prize, to learn about one of the many special laureates that are out there, and then to begin to create your vision of a more peaceful world. It's something that you could put in your community or even have it be worldwide and start to build that out in Minecraft Education Edition. So after our lesson today, we would like you to continue to build your 
build challenger visualization and complete that and then share that with the rest of us. So I'm just going to demonstrate how you can share that within Flipgrid. So after this lesson is over, I'm going to share the link with your teacher for the Flipgrid that we have set up. And that will allow you to be able to go in and do a screen recording and guide us through your ideas and your build within Minecraft. The video is set to just be a minute and a half, so it's you don't have to spend a lot of time talking about it, but just a quick tour. What did you build? Why did you build it? And what is your vision for your build? So when I share the link with your teacher so that you have this, I'm just going to demonstrate how you can screen record right within Flipgrid in case you've never done this before. And Flipgrid gives you the ability to record a video but again, it also gives you the opportunity to do a screen recording. So when you get into Flipgrid after you've completed your build, we have an active citizen build challenge that is already set up and you'll notice that there's already 43 responses in there. So I encourage you to go look at some of those other builds. They're pretty amazing and we can't wait to see your amazing build that you add to this as well. But when you come in here, you're going to go to add response. I know in Flipgrid, we're normally, we're, if you've used Flipgrid, we're used to recording videos of ourselves and talking, but this is going to allow us to give a tour of Minecraft within Minecraft. So when you come into Flipgrid and you're ready to do your response, you can go down to options, then you can go to record screen, and can start screen recording. I have a lot of monitors set up, so it's going to let me choose uh, the one. I want to go to my Minecraft one, so I'm going to choose my Minecraft screen. And I'm going to resume my game here. And so I have not built anything yet. Oh, can you all see my screen? Yep. Well, you can't see my response. Hold on one moment. With all my screens happening here. Here we go. Hmm. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to be able to come in here and this is where you came to build. I'm going to have a minute and a half to go through and give a tour of my build and explain my vision. And so I can come in here, I can be talking, I can be walking you through the builds. And then when I am finished, I can stop recording. And there is the screen recording. And so if I'm good with that and ready to go, I can go ahead and click next and that is going to post that to the Flipgrid and you'll be able to share. And we really do want to see what you build. We we can't wait to see your ideas. So again, I'll be sharing that link so that you can add to that. So we hope you have enjoyed this Active Citizen lesson. We hope that you actually go back into the Active Citizen world and look at the other laureates that are in there. We covered one of them. There's three other ones that you can go and walk in the shoes of and learn more about within that world. So, and if you didn't finish finding all your goats, because I know some of us did and some of us didn't, if you didn't finish with the goats, then go back and also complete that. But do go in and explore and learn about the other laureates that are in there. And then we encourage you to finish your build challenge and share that with us on Flipgrid and share it with everybody that's a part of this lesson and that is going to have access to the Flipgrid. So uh, teachers, just as a reminder, after this lesson is complete, I will send you the recording so that you have that. And then there will be a survey as well as the link for the Flipgrid. So we appreciate you all joining us today. Mr. Maurer and I are going to stay on for any questions. If you get in there and you want to keep, keep building, we'll be on for another 10 or 15 minutes just to help you and answer any questions. Or if you want to share any aha moments that you've had along this journey, we would love to talk with you about that. So. And thank you, Mr. Mauer. Do you have any closing remarks? No, I just uh, continue to stay awesome. And remember why you're working through this. It's like anything with problem solving in your build. If it's getting frustrating or in the world getting frustrated, just break it down into smaller little segments. Give yourself a little bit of room to breathe and then focus on one little tiny aspect at a time, um, especially when you're in your own build. So you can have this amazing idea and then all of a sudden it's like how do i bring it actually to life 
Um, and so don't just think you have to have it all boom perfect on the first thing. That's the beauty of Minecraft is the reiteration process. We can delete bricks and bring them back as many times as we would like to make it the way we want it. So just give yourself permission uh, to reiterate and continue to revise so you have that 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 vision that you feel good with. So uh, other than that, thanks for joining. Best of luck. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. That's always the most exciting piece is to see the uh, the genius inside all of you. I agree. Thank you all. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. But like I said, we will be on here to answer any questions that you might have or if you just want to chat. Otherwise, we hope you have a great rest of your day and um, be sure to check your email for the link for the Flipgrid.